Matt Snell, President of the Frankfurt Future Leaders Advisory Council. Today, I'm here to introduce to you all a very good friend of mine. He's a man who's been propelling Frankfurt toward a better future. Is the kind of future that will bring young people like myself and others back to Frankfurt. Four years ago, this man started a group for the youth. He wanted to gain information and input from the brightest minds and leaders that Frankfurt High School has to offer. As one of these leaders, I have been encouraged by my friend next to me to stretch my mind to think about what can we do as the youth to make an everlasting impact on the community that we call home. I continue to hear more and more about how excited the youth and future of Frankfurt is to see change in their community. In life, we can always choose two options. We can choose to stay where we're at or we can make moves to grow. I was told by a coach of mine, if you're staying the same, you're getting worse because everyone around you is working and working hard. Everyone around you is getting better. Therefore, you will fall behind. The youth has decided it is our job to prevent falling behind. We chose to make moves to grow. These projects that are being started in Frankfurt are for the people to improve quality of place for all individuals, regardless of their skin color or income. These projects are for the future of Frankfurt. There has been one man that has stayed on that path for change. There's been one man that has been doing everything he can to bring everlasting, impactful growth to Frankfurt. I am humbled to have been given the honor of introducing that man today, who I am so proud of. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend, Mayor Chris McBarnes. Hello and welcome to the City of Frankfurt's 2018 State of the City. Thank you, Matt, for such a gracious introduction. The Frankfurt Future Leaders Advisory Council is a highly creative and deeply committed group of young leaders who I have the pleasure to work with on a variety of initiatives for our community. I know, I know, Frankfurt's future is in great hands having witnessed their very capable leadership that will only grow and strengthen as these young leaders evolve in their high achieving lives. I'm speaking to you from Frankfurt High School's outstanding sophisticated broadcasting studio, all thanks to the partnership with instructor Richard Salee and the talented students in the radio and TV class who are working with me on this presentation today. My many, many thanks to all of them. This year's State of the City has in a way already been shared with you through a series of mayoral messages that I've sent out to the local media and posted on the city's website and my Facebook page in the past few weeks. The five messages covered an overview of the challenges and opportunities we face as a community, the financial state of our city, and how we plan to fund the vision for enhancing Frankfurt's quality of place through a new police station, the development of Prairie Creek Park in our downtown, and enhancements needed to our wastewater treatment plant. While we may differ on what should or should not be done with any opportunity, we all can agree we want Frankfurt to improve and become a stronger city for our children and grandchildren. Change is never easy, but change planned carefully in a strategic direction can be beneficial, especially when the other option of doing nothing is extremely detrimental. Frankfurt is at an economic and community development crossroads. We can either take well thought out bold steps necessary to make our community appealing, vibrant, and strong for generations to come, or we can keep the status quo, do very little, and hope, just hope, that by eking out drops of progress that we somehow thrive. The bold steps we have joined together to take in a short amount of time to move Frankfurt forward include building an Ivy Tech Community College campus in the heart of our city, helping create hundreds of new jobs throughout our industrial sector, making record investments into our local roads with more to come, building new streetscapes in our downtown, restoring and beautifying historic Old Stony, strengthening the operations of our municipal utilities with a business mindset, improving our infrastructure throughout every city department to better serve all citizens, attracting a $7.2 million luxury apartment complex in the heart of our downtown square, implementing competitive pay wages for city employees to attract and retain top talent, 
helping save and repurpose the former Southside Elementary School as senior housing, and recently being named the 23rd safest city in Indiana. Frankfurt is on incredibly strong financial footing. The number of projects and department infrastructure upgrades accomplished while keeping our municipal bank accounts full has been no easy task. Providing exceptional financial oversight and strategic financial planning means our administration is the first, I believe, in our city's history that conducts annual budgeting based on a five-year capital improvement plan. The intricacies of careful financial planning mean monetary resources are balanced with ongoing community needs. We have witnessed a lack of new housing development, a leaky population, and don't see many young people return to our community to plant their roots and raise their families here. Why? Because Frankfurt has not yet effectively tackled our major infrastructure amenity challenges. Our police station is woefully inadequate for the highly trained officers and civilian staff who enter that building every single day. Without an amenity infrastructure such as Prairie Creek Park, we will not attract young professionals back to our city to live. Our wastewater treatment plant is nearing capacity and without a plan expansion our economic development leaders won't have the future ability to attract another top employer like Frito-Lay. These three projects have separate funding sources. One is not dependent on the other. A new police station and green space amenities could be funded with monies we already collect. That means no tax increases and no new taxes to get these projects done. More on these projects in a short time. In terms of our strong, robust financial condition, there are some major statistics important for you to know. Our city general fund, our largest, most essential fund, had a cash balance of $1,646,309 when we took office January 1st of 2012. On January 1st of 2018, that fund boasted a cash balance of $2,113,157. Our three-pronged financial philosophy includes long-term planning, maintaining a strong cash reserve, and investing to grow our city's overall assessed value to ultimately reduce the tax burden for every resident that calls Frankfurt home. Private investment grows our city's assessed valuation. The higher our assessed valuation, the lower individual taxes a property owner pays. So to drive taxes down, we must invest in infrastructure that gives us the ability to attract private investment, bring jobs, and reduce the burden on individual taxpayers. When we assumed office, our cash balance across all city funds was $5,237,387. With the capital improvement plan our administration championed, and even after providing significant infrastructure upgrades citywide already in place and more on the way, such as the rebuilding of Washington Avenue into a complete street, 35,000 plus square feet of new sidewalks, replacement of key public safety equipment, rejuvenation of our trash truck fleet, continuing payment of the old Stony Bond, and quality health care and wellness services for our employees, our city will still have a projected cash balance of $5,306,585, which includes a healthy city general fund balance of $2,437,308 by the end of 2019. With this cash balance, our percentage of cash reserves will be at 33.30%, meaning that if Frankfurt did not collect one more tax dollar, we could operate the city for 122 days without losing one essential service. 
Now, most financial experts believe it's good policy to maintain cash reserves at a minimum of 30%. If we remain stagnant with the same amount of businesses and individuals supporting the same services, but the cost of these services we know will increase, there will be further pressure on everyone's pocketbooks, yours and mine. And there is only so much fat that can be trimmed before those essential services are lost. So I've shared the opportunities and the challenges on the horizon for us and the strong financial condition of our city. Now, I'd like to dive a bit deeper into the benefits and funding mechanisms for the three projects I mentioned earlier. A new police station, Prairie Creek Park, and enhancements to our wastewater treatment plant. To achieve this vision of strengthening our community and making it more appealing to businesses, professionals, and young families interested in locating here and calling Frankfurt home. A new police station. It can be built with no new or higher taxes. Pretty amazing, huh? The interior of our police department right now is an embarrassment. You can only put new paint on a 45 Chevy so many times before things start to go south. An in-depth study examined ways we could rehab our existing location, originally built to be a post office, into a 21st century policing center. We also invested and visited other cities, leaders who rehabbed older structures not built to be police stations, such as former schools, and we talked to leaders who built new police stations. From a cost efficiency standpoint, building a new police station is the way to go. This study found the cost to rehab it would be north of $7 million, our existing building. And we would still be left with, well, an old building, which would call for unintended and unexpected upkeep costs even after the rehabilitation takes place. Now, I came to terms with these ongoing costs for Old Stony, but I'm unable to do so with our current police station. Given public safety is our number one priority and the vital need to provide our police officers with a high functioning building. So a new study is being commissioned to determine the best location for a state of the art policing facility that considers the next 25 years of growth and, and decide the entity to take over our existing police station and repurpose it for community use. Secondly, we need to design a police station that will equip officers with modern capabilities and components to promote a strong community policing model. These things could include an outdoor basketball court for youth, state-of-the-art playground equipment, and perhaps even a running track for the entire community to enjoy. To advance the community policing model in this year's budget, we included funds for a school resource officer to serve Frankfurt schools and our youth. In addition, I will advocate for money in our 2019 budget to provide rehabilitation services for those addicted to drugs in our community and truly want to beat this disease. I want you to know that as your mayor, I stand beside you and I want to help. I am convinced Frankfurt jumped from the 50th to 23rd safest city in Indiana because we have the best police officers in Indiana. Effective police leadership and Frankfurt residents working right there alongside our officers. And let me add this. Our police force recently announced their stepped up overdose response and investigations initiative to arrest drug dealers. Beginning this month, our officers will investigate all non-fatal and fatal overdoses as crime scenes. In an increased effort to identify and build strong criminal cases against these dealers. For the first time in Frankfurt's history, 2018 brings with it two full-time detectives dedicated to our narcotics division, 
along with two canine officers to root this poison from our neighborhoods and our city streets. And let me be very clear this evening. To anyone out there dealing drugs or thinking about dealing drugs in our community, in my hometown, I want you to know this and I want you to hear me. You are not welcome here. Our skillful, dedicated officers will find you. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and you will be arrested. We simply will not tolerate this criminal behavior in our community with our public safety servants working hard to eliminate this threat. An effective community policing model is a key economic development and quality of place enhancement tool to prompt job creation, attract more families to call Frankfurt home, and drive private investment upwards. Now, how do we fund it? Through public safety local income tax. These funds can only be used to benefit our public safety departments. This is a tax outside of property taxes you pay on your personal or real property, a tax amount that is dictated by how much money you make on an annual basis. For example, I personally paid $1,408.72 last year in local income taxes. A portion of these taxes went to a local economic development fund and another portion went towards the public safety fund. The public safety income tax fund provides specifically $1,084,615 for our use here in the city of Frankfurt. With help of the city council, we have an approved balanced budget in this fund of $1,088,080, which means we have a minor surplus of $3,465 for this year that can go towards the public safety needs in such high demand. My proposal is that we use this fund specifically created for public safety use to not only continue to fund essential public safety needs, but to also issue bonds to build a state-of-the-art police station. We can accomplish both tasks responsibly by working within our existing tax revenues without any new or higher taxes. Public safety is job number one. We have a need requiring immediate attention. We have a sound plan to fund that need. Next up, Prairie Creek Park. Frankfurt must build and expand a comprehensive amenity infrastructure. To be located on the north side of East Washington Street, directly across from Nickel Plate Flats, Prairie Creek Park will provide space for the performing arts, interactive water features such as a splash pad, state-of-the-art vendor areas, playground equipment, and a dog park, among other great recreational elements that our city so desperately needs. Is this a bold idea? You bet it is. Our administration has been very bold from day one in presenting new ideas never before considered in implementing ideas that had not quite made it over the finish line in the past. One of those bold ideas that became reality was our Ivy Tech campus. Ivy Tech provides the perfect example how we as a community with limited financial resources came together for the greater good and accomplished a major project never achieved before in our history. The implementation model for the creation of our downtown Ivy Tech campus is similar to the model for Prairie Creek Park. Why? Simply because it works. First, public-private partnerships are established. We engage our community's nonprofits, businesses, and corporations to put their own skin in the game. Money. This step creates a higher level of overall community buy-in to help ensure initiatives will succeed. And just like our Ivy Tech campus, Prairie Creek Park's creation will have a public-private partnership at its foundation. We will take a decrepit area of our community and transform it 
into a high functioning, in this case, recreational amenity based upon countless community meetings and feedback sessions that came out of Frankfurt's downtown revitalization plan. We established the Frankfurt Redevelopment Commission in 2012 to provide Frankfurt a cutting edge development tool, a tax increment financing district. Now, an RDC does not create new or higher taxes. Rather, it collects an increment of property taxes paid in a certain geographical area. In this instance, that area is our downtown. And then, through state statute requirements, those incremental property taxes are invested back into our downtown to revitalize it. Our TIF district generates approximately $900,000 per year. With this amount of revenue, paired with a staggering amount of private investment led by the generous gift announced yesterday by the Clinton County Community Foundation of $250,000, we will be able to comfortably build Prairie Creek Park and settle all debt incurred through a term of approximately 10 years. This can be done without raising an additional penny of tax dollars. Prairie Creek Park is our top development priority with the goal of cutting the ribbon on this great facility at the 2019 Hot Dog Festival. Our March 7th Leadership Summit speaker, Dr. John Crompton, a nationally known expert on parks and recreation and tourism sciences, will be sharing his wisdom and experience with us at 6.15 p.m. in the Scanta Theater. So I encourage you to join us to learn more about how a project such as Prairie Creek Park will benefit Frankfurt in so many unique ways. Dr. Crompton will be making another presentation at a special city council meeting March the 8th at 7 p.m. in the council chambers in Old Stoney. I encourage you to attend that meeting as well. The third project needed is the enhancement of our wastewater treatment plant. The utilities project is another animal entirely from the funding we can do for a new police station and a project like Prairie Creek Park. The wastewater treatment plant project would be accomplished through utility rate dollars. In other words, the rates we pay through our monthly utility bills, particularly the sewer rate portion of those bills. Here's some brief background. The average daily flow to our wastewater plant is 3 million gallons of discharge per day during dry weather months. This can significantly increase during the spring and summer. Our current plant capacity is designed for 4.6 million gallons of discharge per day. Obvious, obviously, with these numbers, we are on the downhill side of our plant's capacity. The proposed expansion for the plant would bring us up to 9 million gallons of discharge per day. I understand, folks, this isn't a flashy topic. It's not, it's not glamorous, but it is a very necessary topic we need to address to ensure that Frankfurt remains open for business. We must stay ahead of the curb, especially because Frankfurt is the city that feeds the state, that feeds the world, given our many food-related producers in our industrial park, and more on the way. By the nature of their businesses, food processors bring with them a high degree of wastewater discharge. This reality is another reason we need to build a plant for the future needs of our community, including helping to create new jobs, new careers, and preparing for new housing to come to Frankfurt. Now, Frankfurt's current sewer rate is $31.72 per month for 5,000 gallons of discharge. Frankfurt competes for jobs most often with Lebanon, Lafayette, and West Lafayette. Here is a look at those communities' current sewer rates. I think you'll find them stunning. Lebanon is at $54.35 per month for 5,000 gallons of discharge. Lafayette is at $42.50 per month for 5,000 gallons of discharge. And West Lafayette is at $40.32 per month for 5,000 gallons of discharge. Our proposed plan expansion will, will essentially double 
our daily plant capacity to 9 million gallons per day, along with updating a lift station at County Road 200. This will give us the ability to strategically grow our industrial park. This is how we effectively compete for jobs and how Frankfurt, us hot dogs, come out ahead of our competitors. This is how we win. I look forward to working with our city councilors and utility service board members, our general manager, Todd Corey, and perhaps even a partnership with Clinton County to accomplish this much needed mission. To my neighbors, I ask you this. Instead of asking, can our city afford projects that stimulate economic growth? The question we should be asking is how do we change our city for the better if we don't pursue these projects? Frankfurt is open for business. We must grow our tax base to lower the tax burden for all. And we can achieve the projects I've outlined and grow our various types of infrastructure, safety, recreation, and utilities in a strategic and smart manner. For two of those projects, they can be done working within our existing tax revenues without any new or higher taxes. Frankfurt is at a tipping point with the many opportunities and challenges on our horizon. We can go one of two very different ways. We can rely on the approach we have in the past and hope our community expands. Hope we get that new movie theater, that new car dealership, that new housing subdivision. Hope we attract high tech and high wage earning jobs and careers to our community. We can hope or we can choose the other option. We can invest and deploy sound economic strategy and provide excellent government service to aid in responsible city growth. We can do better. I believe it. I've always believed it because I believe in Frankfurt and all of you who along with me and my family have chosen to make our beloved community our home. Progress takes hard work and teamwork, two elements we've proven time and time again we all do well as a community. We can advance bold ideas together. We can reach greater heights together. As I conclude my remarks for this year's State of the City, I want to share with you that I will not seek re-election for a third term. It's a heartfelt decision I've come to through much discussion and prayer with my family and a choice with which I am at peace. So, my journey here in Frankfurt will continue but in a very different way once my second term concludes at the end of next year. I'm a firm believer that municipal government service is about making a community better in every way possible, but that it shouldn't necessarily be a career. When I started this journey, it was never my intention to make my job as mayor a lifelong career. Having made the decision not to seek re-election, I feel it's important to share it with you early on so that anyone who may be interested in setting in my office starting January 1st, 2020 can begin to prepare to study and truly get involved, if you aren't already, in keeping our hometown going and growing. And maybe, just maybe, there's a young person out there just like me eight years ago. I certainly hope there is. I believe there is. Now, I don't believe you have to necessarily come from financial means to do this job. I certainly didn't. Or a political background. What I do believe is you need a love for this city and your fellow hot dogs, a strong conviction to do what is best for Frankfurt, and to remember every day that this job is not about the office holder, but about everyone 
the office holder serves. The passion and mission I started this journey with, it has not waned. Being your mayor for what will be eight years by the time I'm done is the greatest honor of my life. I will spend with my team the next 671 days working just as hard as I, as we always have, fighting for what is right to move Frankfurt forward in bold, smart, strategic ways to improve the quality of life and quality of place for all of us. In short, to leave my beloved hometown better than I found it. Onward, my friends, onward. With an eye on God, may he bless you. May he bless the city of Frankfurt. Good night.